was working. So, yeah. all right, Kath, why don't you start us off this, <clears throat> this morning? Okay. <clears throat> so I was working on my um, thoughts of the week for this past week, and I came across this quote that I wanted to share with you. And it starts with, anxiety is living out the future before it gets here. Mm -hmm. Faith is trusting that when the future comes, our father will be there to give us what we need. And that was said by a man named Kevin DeYoung. And then I, I gathered some thoughts about it. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, we have lots and lots of things that we could be anxious about. So, you know, starting from the top down, we've got the war from, you know, between Israel and Hamas going on. We've got terrorist activities going on, and you know, in other places in the Middle East. We've got an upcoming presidential election in 2024. And the, the ads are already amping up. Um, you know, the economy and the job outlook and all that kind of stuff, the weather and the weather today and what we have to do after we're done gathering together here on church and it's the end of the year and taxes are coming up and many of us have so many things going on in our professional lives and our personal lives and there's so many things that we can be anxious about. We've got the sickness that's going on around all around us. So it's really easy to understand why so many people are anxious this day, but we, we, our family here, we have the promises of our God that he'll be walking there through everything with us. In James um, 4, verse 7, it says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. And so, you know, in walking with him and submitting to him, it gives us the assurance of his presence and his power in our lives. And God is powerful and with him, all things are possible. And we can endure trials and heartaches and the anxiety and all of that that we're going through because we have Christ's resurrection power in us. We can overcome all of these things that concern us. So when we're feeling anxious, scripture, is the best place for us to turn to when we're looking for answers and comfort and a path in the midst of all of this uncertainty around us. Um, in Psalm 30, uh, 46, verses 1 through 3, it says, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, Though its water roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, no matter what, our God is always there for us. Amen. 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 Thank you. Um, let's start our gathering here with a word of prayer. I'm going to close my eyes. <laughs> Lord, <clears throat> thank you for gathering us together here in your name. We know that even though we are scattered, you are here with us, amongst us. And Lord, I just lift up our church time, our church Zoom to you now. I pray that each person here would have ears to hear, a heart to take it in, a mouth to share, and the will to submit to you in our daily lives. I pray that you be with Tony, anoint the actual Zoom so there's no technical glitches, and I pray that you help him to deliver the word that you would have for us for this day. I lift these things up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, I want to uh, <clears throat> share something because, you know, we don't hear back often enough about stuff that we do. So I'm going to share that screen with you. It's it's some pictures and uh, a thank you from Jeannie from Walking in Light for what we did for, um, for Christmas for the kids. So I'm going to uh, put that back up again and... <clears throat> This is what she said. Thank you so much for your generous giving during our Christmas outreach. Many new children heard the good news of Jesus' birth and why he came. We all shared the Christmas truth with each group that participated. Gideons were available for anyone who wanted a Bible. The children participated in telling the story of Jesus. I've enclosed pictures for you. Thank you again for partnering with Walking in Light. For our Christmas outreach program, we could not have achieved our goal without your support. And we strive to follow up with these new children in the new year. There's a few pictures she sent. 
they actually do this the nativity skit. Can we click on these pictures so we can uh, bring into our screen? I was going to say, Tone, can you tap on one picture at a time and scroll because we've only got little thumbnail prints. Yeah, that's all we have is little front thumbnail. That yeah. a big? That a little bigger? Stop, Jesse. No. Uh, no, no. Yeah, right Double it. click on it so you can show the whole thing. Yeah, so you click on the picture. Double click on it. Oh, I did. Yeah. No, no. Your, oh, your, your, cursor, your, your arrow needs to go up to it. Yeah, well, I have, scroll, I have double clicked on it. That's the, the enlarged one. Hmm. Let me see if I can zoom <laughs> any more. Does it have to no. be in one? I don't mean to be a troublemaker. You're not. But it's, it's, open we, behind we're all window. seeing the same thing, Bill. Yeah, yeah. Find like, the window. Can you go to the picture? No, go to Word. Go to Word, maybe, and then put the window. Yeah. Oh. The picture might be behind oh. the window. Right. Well, um, you stop screen sharing. I know. So I oh, can see sorry. your faces and, and see who's <laughs> talking because. I was looking at the picture. I was looking at the picture, and I'll put it, I'll put it up there again. And so, you're saying you only have a small thumbnail? Yeah, you're showing a bunch of thumbnails. All right, I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm clicking on Zoom, and I am zooming in on that that picture on my screen. What if you go to Word and then to the picture? No, no. No, they're not in Word. They're in my no. they're in my saved pictures. Did did okay. that picture get any bigger as I zoomed in on it? No, no, no. 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 Your arrow, your black arrow, was down the bottom of your. No, that's ours. That's okay, okay, it's ours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Are you one no? Taxi drivers. I think that window is in front of your picture. Move the window down. What window are you? Talking the one with all the pictures that we're seeing, the one that you clicked on, to try and hide that. I'm not sure it's going to work, but or put your cursor at the top of the screen and move and move it down. Yeah. Well, what I did, okay, is that screen that you were seeing. I clicked on the picture so that I'm. Well, let me try. Let me try this first. Before I start <laughs> screen sharing, all right. <clears throat> Let's do it in reverse order here. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go. St I'm going to start sharing this with you now, and we'll see if this is any better. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. A little bit. There, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Okay. There. Yep. Yeah. All right. And we can each we can each individually, you know, spread it out on our screens to see it bigger. Okay. That's fine. Oh, nice. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sweet. Angels. Oh. The players. <laughs> now you see this kid. He's tall. This kid here. The yeah, big kid. yeah. I think he's fourteen years old. Jeannie said. Wow. wow. And he's very, very simple in his faith, and he's he's got a very gentle, uh, kind spirit. Nice. And he was. Um, he wanted to, he, he really couldn't decide whether he wanted a football or a basketball for a gift. So, wait till you see how many gifts that there are. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, really? Oh, that's wonderful. So, they do this in three different places. Wow. And <clears throat> those gifts go along with them whatever's left and <clears throat> so anyway that kid um that kid had uh 
uh, he he chose a, a basketball because yeah. he's tall. Yeah, <laughs> and he lives in an, in an area where there are, where there are gangs, and um, but he has been open in in telling people about Jesus and mm-hmm. God's love, and uh, God bless him. So when it was all said and done, there was a football left over, and Jeannie grabbed that and made sure he got not only the basketball that he chose, but he got a football as well. Nice. And you just think about the fact that those kids probably wouldn't have any kind of Christmas at all, and how we were able to do something small like we did, like, participate mm-hmm. with that. I think that's that's a tremendous blessing, and I thought I'd, it'd be nice to share that with you today. Thank you. I um, you know, I started reflecting a while ago <laughs> about New Year's and. <clears throat> starting off a new year and how it how important it is to people to have like that that place where they can say okay I got a clean slate I'm starting this year and I'm going to be this and I'm going to do that and I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that and um uh, I <clears throat> I thought about that and boy some of the the physical uh well-being commercials, you know, the the Peloton commercials, they drive me nuts. I have to switch channels or mute it or whatever when they come on. And and boy, oh boy, sometimes you'll see the same commercial twice in the in this in the break. You know, it's like yeah. hammer, hammer, hammer. And mm. um, so many of those things are just centered around us trying harder and doing more and being better and different than what we were uh today or yesterday and um so it got me thinking about a new year's resolution and and through some of the devotionals that i read and just that's the way god speaks to me sometimes is it's part of fellowship of the body of christ i think and the spirit speaks universally to people who want to hear or who are listening. And so I, I want to start off my thoughts today with Philippians chapter three, which is Paul's reflection about where he came from and how he was, uh, he had no confidence in his flesh. And <clears throat> around verse 10, he says, I want to know Christ. Uh, yes to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. And so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. I need to get a a lozenge here. (laughs) Not that I have already attained this. And that's a nice smile, Karen, by the way. That's beautiful. Mm. Um, not that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal but I press on to take take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me brothers and sisters I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Now, what Paul wanted more than anything else was to know gnosis, G-N-O-S-I-S is the Greek word, which means to have the knowledge of, the understanding of, the power of the resurrection, which in Ephesians, he says, is in all of us. It's in us individually, and it's in us as a church. He wanted to know that more. He wanted to know that better. He wanted understanding about what that power is. And I don't know about you, but some st- sometimes, or most of the times, it seems somewhat obscure to me. Because... I live in the world. I am a finite being and I am a carnal being and 
the power of the resurrection is not always really clear to me. It's how that is exercised in me. So I want to know that more. And participation in his sufferings, Paul says. So he wanted to know the about the power that the resurrection brings to us as believers and also to participate in the sufferings and become like Christ in his death. And so somehow to attain the resurrection of the dead. Those are the things that Paul wanted to become or to experience. So let's call that not his New Year's resolution, but I would call that his daily resolution. Mm. <clears throat> Gail said something a few weeks ago, she, you know, before the holidays, she says every day should be Christmas. We should celebrate the birth of our Savior every day. And we mm. should celebrate the resurrection every day, not just once a year, but every day. And Paul acknowledged this to those who looked up to him. He says, I haven't already obtained all of this. Believe me, I haven't got it yet or have already arrived at the goal. But I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Jesus took hold of him personally, face to face, one on one, and said, this is what you're going to have to go through for me. And Paul, he had to keep pressing on for that because it was nothing he aspired to himself. Everything that he had aspired to was in his past, and he was highly successful, highly capable, and but now he had a new new vision, a new mission about what God wanted for him, why God created him, why God made him. And he says, so I haven't yet taken hold of it, but one thing I do, I forget what is behind, <clears throat> excuse me, and I strain toward what is ahead. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Mm -hmm. Great is thy faithfulness. <clears throat> because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. Paul could be consumed. And everybody who makes a New Year's resolution to do more, be better, get, get right, is not forgetting about what's behind and not relying on relying on God's grace. No, those things consume us, and that's what drives us to want to be better and to do more. Mm. <clears throat> and so, Lamentation says God's compassions, they never fail. His mercies are never ending. That's so important to understand, because like I said before, I'm a finite mm. being. And I know I have my limitations. And I know within myself, a rock cannot soften itself. But God can soften a rock. Mm -hmm. And so his faithfulness and his mercies are complete. They are never ending. His never ending unfailing love for those who come to him is complete within itself. It does not need to be any different. It is not subject to whim or fancy or choosing who he will give it to. Yes, he will show mercy to those who he will show mercy to. But for anyone who comes to him, he is more than willing to accept them and administer his grace to them. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. I will wait for him. <clears throat> So understanding that we have good days and bad days. And I think that, you know, there are things, there are indications in the scriptures of the letters of Paul that it let us know and explain to us that he struggled with fear. He struggled with um, uh, trusting God, just like all of us might or do. He struggled with those things. Uh, there is that one passage where, you know, it says that we were cons consumed by fear even to the point of death. <coughs> Excuse me. And so I think he knew that there are going to be good days and there are going to be bad days. There are going to be good days as long as we understand God's love for us. 
and the fact that he never leaves us or forsakes us and that he is always there for us with compassion and love and mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. And as we learn to embrace that and move into that and walk in that every day and be able to say within ourselves, I'm forgetting what's behind mm -hmm. and I'm pressing on to what God has called me to. So knowing who we are and that God shaped us in our mother's womb and he called us according to his purpose and plan for his purpose and plan in our lives, mm -hmm. then that is a tremendous place to be. It's a whiteboard. It's a clean slate every morning because all of our sins are forgiven. All of our failures are forgiven. And it's a lovely thing to be able to walk in the purity and completeness of that grace. It changes our focus from ourselves and our failings and our weaknesses and our frailties and it allows us to see christ who is our completeness and our strength and he who began the good work in us will see it through unto completion period so i can try as hard as i want i can do as much as i think i should do but that doesn't necessarily change me. But the knowledge of God and the knowledge and understanding of who Christ is and how that is somehow something that changes me from within is the thing that allows me to say, ah, um, there's a freedom in that. There's a, a, a lovely freedom in that. So if I have a New Year's resolution, it is to want to know that more and to never take it lightly or for granted, which I am prone to do. That's me. Mm -hmm. And it's not uncommon. It's common to all because we're all the same in some ways. <clears throat> And so as we approach a, a new time, a new year, I, I want to share something that Gary Wilkerson wrote, David Wilkerson's son. And he quotes a couple of different things here. He quotes Spurgeon and he quotes a conglomerate of, of scripture. He says, settle this within your heart today. The Lord says, by love, mercy, my holiness, my counsel, my power, all that I am is complete and without end. I am yours. You are mine. Come to me. So in the new year, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of the resurrection. I want to share in the fellowship of his sufferings. Ooh, that's a tough one though, isn't it? Mm. I want to, but I need something from him that makes that important to me. Because I don't want to suffer. The older I get, the more comfort I seek. Mm. And I want to understand his death becoming like him. I want to become like him in death. I want to die to the things that Christ died to because that is what gave birth to the resurrection from the dead. And that's what gives resurrection from the dead to us in not only in this time and place, but in a time and place to come as well. So that is my aspiration for this year not i choose my word carefully it's my aspiration for this year because it is him who works within me yeah. and i want to be able to yield to that to share 
and to grow that way. So may the Lord God bless us with hearts that desire to know him more and more completely and more fully and to embrace the fact that it is his will that will bless us and not our own will because none of us can determine what happens tomorrow. So, amen. Amen. <clears throat> Anybody else have a thought? Something to share on what I said? I just want to remind everybody that yesterday was Epiphany. And when we think of Epiphany, we think of sudden knowledge or at least that's what i think of a, a sudden knowledge that comes forth and um just the thought of epiphany and and to dwell on the meaning of that word and how they related to the the kings who came to to christ when he was a child and the kings who sought him out who were gentiles and were not of the jewish faith and you know, just that whole aspect of what epiphany means to us as individuals and what the word itself means. Hmm. Well, Bill and Danielle had to get out. Something happened to their computer. So they're coming back in now. Anybody else? I don't know. What's that, John? I said, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, there's, a, there's another run. Uh, Kathy quoted James 4. Uh, I think it was verse 5. But later on, I had something from James. It says, uh, today or tomorrow, we will go to this city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. And one of the verses in Lamentations following that uh, famous scripture who says, who can speak and have it happen if the Lord has not decreed it? <clears throat> is it not from the mouth of the Most High that both calamities and good things come? Um, excuse me and you know coming into this season of political ads and politi politicians who tell us that they're going to make and they're going to do hey this country needs to needs to come to its knees before the almighty and that's the only thing that's going to save america i don't care what political party policy procedure it it doesn't matter who can who can speak and have it happen I pray for that humility to come upon our leadership of this nation <clears throat> that they would cry out for mercy to God. Yes, Lord. So, who would like to close us in prayer? Or did anybody else think of anything else that they wanted to share? Alberta? Uh, no, just um, pray for tomorrow and Tuesday and Thursday, please. And I thank you that we can all get together. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. Just encourage each other in the Lord and keep on keeping on. Stay strong. Hebrews chapter 10. Do not neglect the gathering together of yourselves, mm -hmm. even more so as you see the day approaching. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Who's going to pray? I will. I will. Thanks, Gail. Our Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful that you are steadfast, that your mercies are new every morning, afternoon, and evening, that you never leave us, that you never fail us, no matter how many times we fail you, that you love us despite ourselves. We just glory and honor in you and in your presence, and we just thank you and ask that you would continue to be with us as we depart from one another that you will give us health, happiness, protection. Keep us, our minds focused on you, we pray. And it's in Jesus' name we can pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Thank you, everybody. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. See you soon. Yeah. Stay strong. Yeah. Mm.